Are you all set, Gautam? Yeah. Hello, okay. uh, hello team. Yeah, I hope uh, hope everybody is uh, having a good time on 14th of Feb and uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. And yeah, we today, you know, thank you for joining. And today we are going to talk about Big SQL, uh, which is uh, which stands for uh, you know sequential query language uh, in big data domain. So we would go over the topics uh, where we introduce Hadoop, um, the insights, you know, what clusters are, how do we position data onto clusters and, and how they are connected, what what is big data. And, you know, we will touch on those basics. And then we will define on what big SQL is uh, and, and its architecture and what is it doing on big data or Hadoop platform. And then we would talk about uh, Big SQL being an ultimate hybrid engine, and also we were, we are going to discuss the benchmark that Big SQL has, uh, you know, uh, um, put on the market, and you know those are audited by TCP, and and then we are going to do a small demo where we will show the live links and and you know the performance. How do we? You know, check on the performance of Big SQL, how we could provision it, how we could monitor it, and how we could manage the services on on Hadoop. So, starting with the uh, you know introduction to Hadoop, Hadoop is basically a framework. Uh, it's it's a framework in big data open source technology. Hadoop is o often regarded as uh, you know as as one particular technology, you know, it's not. It's it's a framework. It's basically a solution to a lot of problems, a lot of problem statements. So Hadoop is a framework number one, and and in big data and open source technology, it is termed and positioned as something where clusters integrate. So when I say clusters integrate, that means that means there is there are there are clusters where data is there and how it lies on those. Uh, those clusters and how we how these clusters are formed we're going to talk about that and and the integration among each other and then you know how it integrates to provide a common data repository so so that that data repository is often termed as data lake too so you know then then we we are going to talk about a cluster how it is made of master and then slave nodes and and there's a link uh, to one of the papers that i published uh, at ASE and, and and like for further readings, but we are going to discuss it now. So, so as you might see in the figure, uh, there is there are two blocks, and each block is considered as cluster. And the first block is cluster one, another block is cluster n. So, the the dotted line on the top represents that there are n clusters that integrate with each other. How do they integrate? Is using network. So so that network could be uh, internet, and then it could be tunnel mode, it could be P2P Ethernet, it could be VPLs, it could be fiber network, it could be dark fiber or cloud. So and and there are a number of ways that you can connect and let uh, these clusters communicate to each other, and and the way that we use it is using network, and then. On each cluster, there are different locations. That these locations are physical locations. It could be anywhere, you know, inside a region, a particular country, territory, or or at, in the world. Like, so so these are look these these racks. There are racks that are sitting on a particular location physically, and these racks they comprise of a cluster. Now. How we how we want to define a cluster is like basically when you you know a lot of people might be hearing that you know this company has its data center in Silicon Valley this company has its data center in Louisiana so so when they say that that means that you know one particular location they have put on their different they have put on their network racks and on those network racks there are like stacks that stacks hold disks. And with big data technology, you know, whenever you are storing, I'll, I'll go on to the basics. Let's say you have some pictures and you want to store some pictures on your computer. You basically need a hard disk. So when you need a hard disk, you are basically, and sometimes you run out of space. So, so what happens is you connect another hard disk to it. So this is this is this mechanism of connecting another hard disk is is called JBOD, just bunch of disks. 
So you kind of adding disks in order to expand your hard disk. So these bunch of disks, they add up to stacks. And these stacks all together, they make up a rack. And these n number of racks in a particular location, you know, they comprises of a cluster. So, so and then they communicate using a network topology, which in Hadoop world we term, term, that, term as Hadoop distributed file system. Now these Hadoop distributed file system, they interact on a, on a rack level, on location level, on cluster level, and then they are connected using network. And then, you know, we could perform extract transform load. That is one of the simple use cases that we perform on these clusters. Because let's say, let's on your computer, you want to look at particular image, and then you basically scroll, scroll through, it, through it, and then you or you go on a particular picture and you pull it out and you basically see it or analyze it. That's that's something similar. We extract the information, we transform it, we load it. Let's say we we make some transformation and then we load into another another uh, you know analytical tool or data. We do data science on it and then then we send it to another database or we generally you know pull it out from a database too. So this is. This is basically the concept of Hadoop and the clusters that lies inside Hadoop. It's pretty much very clear and, and you know, I broke it down into very basic pieces, very easy to understand. Uh, I would love to have questions answered on this if somebody has have any questions like at the end of the session. Going on to on to next, there are, we have to perform operations on data that resides on Hadoop platform. With this I mean that there is data that lies on those disks, and those disks are basically into a cluster. And in order to interact to that cluster, we need some kind of tool or mechanism, like if we want to perform operation on that particular data lying onto that disk. How do we do it? There are different ways to do it. Number one is fig, another one is hive, and we have map reduce, then we, we can do, uh, we can use certain algorithms, we can use big SQL, we can use Spark, we can use n number of things to, to do it. Now why Big SQL? What's so important about Big SQL? Well, Big SQL is a very powerful query engine on Hadoop. What does it architecture looks like? Well, Big, uh, big SQL architecture, it, it has JDBC and ODBC components, so it makes it very easy to integrate with any of the databases or, or inside Hadoop. It compiles and optimizes a query. It's a query optimizer and it's a compiler too. So whenever you trigger a query, it will compile it and it will bring you the result. And and then it coordinates the execution of the query. So it's, you know, it makes uh, it makes it very easy for you to just like write a simple query and and get the result. And then you know all the, and what is the major thing about Big SQL is all the worker processes. You know they reside on the compute nodes. So there are management nodes and compute nodes. So when I say management and compute nodes, uh, there are like inside the clusters there are different nodes on which data is stored. So, so some, so let, let's say, let's say there's a book, and on that book there's an index and there are different chapters. So you can say index is basically management, like how you management where where are you gonna look for the data. But data is actually inside the chapters. So, so imagine big SQL lies onto each chapter. So that makes it very easy to communicate on with the data. So, and then worker nodes, you know, the, the, it's very easy to stream data between each other, like with among the chapters, it's like on one compute node, you can stream data onto another compute node. What I mean by stream data is basically when you store some amount of data onto Hadoop clusters, it gets replicated into, you know, by default 3x. So 3x is like three times. So, so whenever you have data onto one compute node, you can imagine it having onto two different compute nodes too. So the interaction and streaming of data is is very, you know, is it's very much needed. It's very easy, and and it's something that is built on to handle fault tolerance of the system. Now going forward, big SQL and Spark. Big big SQL and Spark. Spark. What is Spark? Spark is a fast and general engine for large scale data processing. It's very heavy on analytics side. A lot of companies investing big time on Spark just for gaining analytics out of using Spark out of the data. Now why why do we need Spark? 
because it's 100 times faster than Hadoop MapReduce in memory. And when we talk about disk, it's like 10 times faster, and that is proven like by Spark. And it supports different languages like Java, Scala, Python, and R. And then it combines all the, you know, SQL, streaming, and complex analytics. It has different portions, machine learning, and, you know, it could give you graph views. It helps in streaming, and, you know, it supports SQL too. And uh, as we all know, Spark, you know, you could run it on Hadoop, or you can run it standalone or onto cloud. So it offers you a wide variety of uh, components. And uh, and how is Big SQL related to Spark? Like where does Big SQL comes in picture when we talk about Spark? So Big SQL is the first and only engine that integrates with Spark. So this is big add-on. Why why Big SQL? You know is uh, is considered to be one of the best technologies in in Hadoop world. Also also we could see that you know there are traditional developers who have been working in, in the IT industry for a very long time, and they don't understand what MapReduce is. They don't want to write Python or Java code. They don't want to go, you know, write Spark uh, algorithms. They don't want to write, they don't want to learn Pig and Hive because it's, it's basically, you know, they're learning a new technology, and, and it's, it's uh, another learning curve for them. Big SQL is something that leverages most recently, like 2011 uh, SQL, it's it's compliant to 2011 SQL, and and what does that mean? That means that whatever query you're writing using SQL, you can simply write big S using big SQL, and let's say you you write select star from you know X Y Z table, and it's gonna re result you like the same as you would be getting the result from writing a simple SQL query onto you know a data set. So Let's say you have Hadoop uh, architecture on your premises, and you want to trigger a query onto Hadoop using SQL. You could you could think of Big SQL as same as SQL engine, and you would trigger the query, and the backend would take care of all the processing, and you'll get the same result. So it becomes very easy for all the traditional developers to to use Big SQL. And then when it integrates with Spark, so all the new data scientists those are like into Spark world, and Spark is being a very a unique kind of uh, you know uh, analytical engine that supports machine learning and several other components you know gives the edge to you know person who's working on using big sql on to big data because it, it is it has integration with spark and and that is basically because it has odbc and jdbc connectors as we discussed in our architecture big sql is the ultimate hybrid engine okay and it gets better that means that there are, you know, when we when we talk about its ultimate hybrid, hybrid means it has it, you know, on-prem components, on cloud, and and you know, lies in between, in both of them too. So when we talk about, uh, you know, it's it's it basically it has a you know, edge over other databases, and and there's a statement that that is said in Hadoop world, big SQL eats other databases. What that means is, you know. Using Oracle SQL, DB2 SQL, and Netiza SQL, you know, you can combine all three of them and use that big SQL because it serves as a common query compiler on all those databases too. And it would, it, and you would get the results on on Hive, and you can you store the results on Hive storage or Hadoop database, or you can analyze it using Spark. As as we can see through the diagram, you know, it's a common query compiler and optimizer. And its compatibility is uh, very high. It's almost 100%, and you know it's very consolidating. And there are different vendors who are using it, and there are so many, so many syntaxes that it supports. And when I say so many syntaxes, it even supports federated query. What are federated queries? We can we can discuss it uh, you know, going forward. Gautam, we have a question. So, um, it's actually yeah. more like a statement. Uh, it says. Um, SAP Vora has integrated with Spark only engine. So, could you comment on uh, the integration of, of Spark with SAP Vora? So, SAP is trying to do a lot of things, uh, but SAP is uh, something you know. It's an analytic processing platform, and uh, we really you know it it really has to distinguish. They are they they claim that they're in memory. 
but then when we talk about big data open source components that's where that's where we do not uh, consider you know sap uh, standing out uh, i'm not sure like what exact question is but i would love to take it like uh, you know i mean i i don't understand like uh, but when we say that big sql you know i think this question is coming from you know it's the first and only engine that integrates with spark so maybe vora has connectivity to uh, you know integrate with spark but it is not similar to big sql so big sql is basically a query compiler whereas the sap vora you know it it doesn't it's not an uh, you know it's it's sap proprietorship and sap is like way far when it comes to open source technology you know they they lag behind it's basically you know uh, they are uh, i'm not sure like their analytical processing engine and and they are very much focused on in memory they have uh, a lot to compete with so so it's not similar they might i am not uh, very much familiar with bora they might have integration but uh, but it is it is not something that we compare big sql with big sql is compiler engine it's uh, compared to you know hive or hog or you know things uh, you know uh, solutions like that so if if we need if you need more information like i can provide that off offline or you know after the session so coming back to uh, the, uh you know hadoop ds uh, and uh, you know uh, big sql being one of the first uh, only to produce uh, uh, audited benchmark it's uh, you know and they they have been uh, they've been uh, compared uh, big sql with impala and hive uh, on on different platforms like single user run and multi user run and then you know on 10 terabyte of single user load on and on 10 terabyte of multi user load and big sql uh, you know processing wise has stand out I mean, we have the figures here and uh, you know the intent of benchmark was to basically measure which uh, which query engine stands out, out on you know identical workload so big sql is is you know has very significant uh, uh, uh time of run over here as you might see is 0.48 second for uh 48 minutes 28 seconds for uh, a single user run for a particular workload which is uh, 2 hours and 55 minutes for uh impala and 4 hour 25 minutes for hive so so you know uh, big sql is it definitely stands out here and then there are letter of attestation and emphasizing uh you know performance is the, when compared to cloud era impala and hot work hive and then uh, these results are non tpc benchmarks as we see now administration of big sql so gartner published a paper where where gartner said that you know big uh, big insights or big sql or or ibm products they have a, a a high value in in big data world but administration is something something they you know they should be looking on so so administration part of big sql has been significantly improved since then just not big sql but like overall so uh, how how we administer big sql is using ambari so ambari is a platform where you know we provision manage and monitor data so what is meant by provisioning managing and monitoring is basically basically you have to spin up a hadoop cluster so so when you want to spin up a hadoop cluster you basic you kind of provision it and you install hadoop services so install hadoop services means you have to configure the you know files in order to put them in a particular location you have to set up your uh, data sizes you have to set up uh, you know define your system requirements so all those things are are done using web interface uh, uh, using ambari we can do it on uh, using command line too but but this is some uh, this is a platform that is offered uh, which provisions the data and you know you can start stop those and or reconfigure those using manage and then there are, there's a monitoring aspect of ambari too where where you know the dashboards health could be monitored and uh, and when when we say the dashboard health health could be monitored that means uh, there is an alert and mechanism system where 
you know, let's say a cluster is down, a particular service is down, it will automatically send you a notification using email or, or or any other other kind of means that it would inform you that you know that Ambari would inform you that you know you need to look upon a particular service because it's down. Also, does metric collection basically you know uh, collects all the logs so if there is a connection outage, what time it was, you know using time timestamp log collection. So all those metric collection is also done by Ambari. Uh, Ambari is this a study in itself. It's it's. Uh, it's a uh, you know tool or a dashboard which which we gonna look at you know going forward, and now we can we can look at the live links and demonstrations now. So so this is uh, this is how Ambari looks like. So you have, we have like seven alerts here. It's a sandbox environment where where we can see, you know, how much disk is used to using SDFS and what are the data nodes that are live. You know, what, how many are dead, how many are decommissioned, and then we have we have SDFS links like we have name node, secondary name node, and data node. So it, over here, you know, in this cluster, I have one name node, one secondary name node, and three data nodes, and then. You know, it's a shared environment, so I don't have we we don't display like the memory usage and network usage usage here. Uh, they're not accessible. Uh, but then we have name node heap uh, percentage and and then uptime, downtime, and you know uh, all the components that uh, you know how much uptime for resource manager, what is the heap of resource manager, and you know how many no node managers are live. There are three active. One is lost, and under zero and unhealthy and rebooted. So these are the you know. Then this is room that is you know. There are three uh, nodes that are live. So and then we have yarn links over here that displays. And then we have all the you know components uh, listed on uh, Ambari: SDFS, MapReduce, Yarn, Hive, Hadoop Database, Pig, Scoop. Uh, Scoop is SQL plus Hadoop and Uzi. It's it's an orchestration framework and Zookeeper. It's a resource manager and then Flume, and then uh, we have Big Big R, Big Insights, Big Sheets. Big Sheets is a component, uh, you know, sim uh, which which lies onto Big SQL Analytics platform too. So, so Big Sheets is something uh, something. Let's say if we run a query onto Big Insights and then uh, you know we we have data sets available on it. The results would be shown into Big Insight. So, so Big Sheets. So that's something how it looks like. So, so it's basically you know you would have country on one uh, column and you can crawl like uh, what time it is. Timestamp would be on another one and then what is the uh, info that is feed it onto it. It could be hashtags. And, you know these hashtags could be driven from social media, and then uh, we can put uh, analytics onto it and then. What time it was inserted, and you know what is the time they were uh, explored or crawled, and is is the person looking for as an adult? So those kind of you know breakdowns uh, we have on the big insights. It's basically one of uh, one of its own uh, kind of uh, uh, you know analytic uh, uh, tool which provides us the data into you know a form of sheets. The the sheets you know could be Compared to Excel sheets, but but it's it's different in a lot of ways, and and we can derive the results in form of big sheets, like we can do CSVs and can put it onto a tool or even form graphs out of it. So so this is this is pretty much it, and then we have uh, we do have uh, uh, Ambari uh, for you know this is this is the metric collection. So as we mentioned, you know, we collect data uh, logs using Ambari. So that's where it generates, uh, you know, all the alerts. And again, these are the Ambari metrics that uh, where you can, uh, you know, collect the processes data that, you know, connection failed or capacity. Uh, this is the capacity that is used. So basically a log connection uh, service. And then, then we have, uh, you know, uh, components listed here that is uh, you know yarn big insights big sql and then and we do have uh, something called uh, big in uh, big sql server so this 
so that would be that would be over here mm -hmm. yeah big IBM data server manager so we can connect to big SQL databases and then we can define our we can we can develop using SQL editor here so so that is uh, you know a query interface we can also connect using command line so when we say using command line basically doing a SSH uh, uh, onto so we can we can do a SSH and that there is a um, for my uh, particular yeah you can see so oh, Tom, uh, there's a question. Um, is this viewed yeah. a self data preparation tool like IBM Big Sheets? So Big Sheets is basically an analytics tool. So, so it's it's like uh, you can understand it as uh, you know you want to drag data out of Hadoop and you want to look at in form of tables onto sheets. So you have Big Sheets. Uh, so. Going deeper into it, there's a console, uh, you know, Big SQL and Text Analytics sandbox where you can actually launch Big Sheets, and it's for Text Analytics, and and it's a, you know, you have Big Sheets and you have Big SQL console. So you can, it's a way to look look for your data. And you can, in in simple terms, analytic analytical tool, you can say. Yeah, and you know we can we can use SSH too, and then you know we provide our credentials here, and, and we we get connected to uh, to one of the clusters, and you know we can go on to it, put our data on Hadoop, and and do different kind of uh, you know. So now I'm directly connected to the cl one of the clusters on to my you know when I say clusters, I mean a big inside cluster. Where I can, you know, I'm directly connected to a big SQL database, and you know, I can basically create a table on there. I can trigger a query, and you know, get data from it. Can do a lot of lot of other things. So this is just the introduction that I'm trying to give. Uh, you know, in this webinar, there like there are very much, like it has a vast scope, and we can go into deep dives if, if you know our audiences are interested. We can do another webinar where we can, you know, um, discuss the federated query. What is what is so uh, unique about Big SQL that it is uh, it is something that is liked by a lot of companies. Is it has a it has a learning component uh, associated to Big SQL. When I say learning component, it's basically let's say you trigger a query uh, using SQL. You say uh, select uh, employee ID from employee table. And join it to uh, select uh, employee number from employee table. I mean, employee name from employee table. So you basically get your your you know optimizer would basically go to that particular table and select all the employee ID from first table, and then it would join it to another table, and then you know it would scroll down onto another table, collect all the employee name, and then provide you a view of uh, both the tables. Now, given that you know, you need this view which you have attained in the result. You need this view to be associated to a table called sales. So, and then you have sales ID onto a table called sales. So now you have you have uh, an inner join to that sales table, and you want this result to be uh, joined to that sales table result. What what normal SQL uh, query compiler would do is it would first go into employee table for employee ID, then go to employee table for employee name, and then go to sales table for sales name, and then give you a logical view. What Big SQL does is it will have the first data stored, and then it would call that particular view, and would it, it's a learning component of Big SQL, and then include it to sales data, so the time is very less. It, and you know the time taken in processing is very less, so your speed is recovered, and I mean it's, speed is very fast. So these are like just one or two examples where where I can you know explain how Big SQL stands out uh, in the market. But there are so many like so many differentiators that uh, Big SQL has, and those are kind of very interesting to know about. Then uh, you know then. 
I'm going to yeah this is a this is an analytics demo cloud uh, uh, where where anybody could sign up and you know they can leverage the big SQL and text analytics sandbox platform in order to you know spin up their own cluster and have a shared space on the cluster and then perform their own queries and you know develop or or monitor their own databases that's where you can set up databases everything is available like the way you could learn it is is basically if you go to is something called big data university so if you go to bigdatauniversity.com so i have the links on to i have the links on to the resources here where we have in uh, you know, a bigdatauniversity.com you could just go there and and it's very normal sign up you could do and then there are certain courses that are available not only specific to big sql but also also you can leverage big insights uh, you know information from there and and several other open source components so it's a very good platform to be utilized in order to basically learn what hadoop and big data technology is and how we can analyze data or big data using different uh, tools like such as you know python r or or spark and you know this is uh, so it, it basically offers you all the courses and this is all free so so you can just click on a particular course and you know analyzing big data with spreadsheet ui or analyzing big data using uh, you know inter- this has introduction to big sheets you can identify a business and technical challenge dealing with big data and you know define your your workbook so so these are uh, some certain things that uh, you know it's like when working with spreadsheet you have received the error message that data set is too large to handle so you know things you could do you could just get yourself enrolled in here and then when the course is available you can just uh, you know opt for it and just a three hours course but you you get to know everything about you know the components so so that that's one thing and and another is like we have the data scientist workbench where where we could actually play around with the tools in order to get a, a RFI or a, a, not a RFI like a POC kind of uh, uh, thing uh, out of these components because you know it's already said there it's all for like you know all for open source people and people interested in all the data scientists anybody could could just log in and sign up. and could utilize the platform is 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 basically you know free of cost and uh, available to everybody and the learning part could be you know taken care by big data university apart from that uh, you know big insight uh, what big insight is and ambari is the, uh, and you know big sql is how how big sql you know components are lying on top of big insights and and what it does is we can we i i would like to go on to on to those uh, uh you know basic basic components of uh, um, big sql and big, big insights too now now coming back to that there is there is one paper that uh, and that is published by uh, you know one of the uh, people at IBM where they discuss about the components of uh, you know um, big insights and uh, what big insights does and and you know data lake concept what what data lake is you know there are so many so many terms that uh, you know people have been hearing it's like it's data lake uh, uh, is one of the repository or you know what are, what is the you know thing that goes around with data lake and how it how it comes into you know um, big sql picture why why is big sql uh, you know so important why where is it associated how we you know how we uh, think that uh, you know big sql uh, lies itself on to top of hadoop and so to 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 discuss that uh, i would take a use case and and this is uh, this is towards the end of the webinar it's basically assume that there is there is a lot of data onto your computer and that is that lies in form of structured data and unstructured data and that structured and unstructured data is something that you have to scroll through so let's say there are pictures and pictures have text in it and you want to make that text uh, you know you want to look through those text let's say you have your driver's license or your passport lying on your computer and and you have no idea among like 
thousands of pictures where that particular picture would be located. Using big data, you know, there is some there is something called text uh, image to text. So that image to text thing would make that particular picture searchable. You you can basically you know locate that particular image, and uh, using big data technology, you can just specify a particular word, let's say license, and that particular image would be on top. So this is one of the use cases that, uh, you know, big data technology has uh, solved. So it's an image, image, uh, image text processing, and, uh, you know, it, it also covers a lot of pattern recognition concepts. So uh, in, coming back to the point, uh, there is there was a need of, putting all this data onto some common platform where these algorithms could be run. So that common platform was the concept of uh, data lake. So what data lake is, it's basically governed by a lot of practices where you have the security in line and you know you want to make sure that whatever you are putting. So let's say there are different vendors, those vendors want to you know uh, put their data onto one common platform, that common platform where you know they are they have a governance on a governance piece uh, uh, available. Let's say, let's say you know you are ingest, you are getting your data from different uh, different vendors all across the United States, and your data center is located into Phoenix, Arizona, and you have your uh, you know vendors located onto different different uh, uh, geographical location, and they are ingesting their data onto your physical location of Arizona. So when they are ingesting, they are basically doing it onto you know using using a frequency. That frequency is like let's say you know two times in 24 hours, three times in 24 hours, or like it's a one-time load. Sometimes it's an incremental load. So those those pieces you know have to be governed by some technology. So and how to get that data from those vendors? So scoop, as we mentioned, like in our uh, you know Ambari slide where we had scoop in place. So scoop is something that SQL plus Hadoop. So we ingest or take out or ingest the data onto Hadoop platform using scoop. So we basically perform a SQL operation saying that, you know, let's uh, fetch all the data from this particular time to this particular time where the load is incremental. When I say incremental, let's say, you know, where the uh, we, we could define a limit or we can say where timestamp is greater than a particular time, let's say tomorrow, I mean, let's say yesterday or day before yesterday. So so that's something that you can define, you know, predefine in, in a data lake. So, uh, so you know, this is this is the ingest part of data lake. So let's say when you have, you're getting all those components onto data lake, you have all the data residing on that one particular data repository. Now this data repository could be on-prem, could be on on cloud and it could be hybrid too. Now, big SQL comes into picture when you want to fetch that particular column with that particular timestamp. Let's say you want to look for that this this time that this time this is the particular time where you are getting the you know uh, a new record on your table. So you might just want to uh, you know put a table. Uh, put a uh, put a query of that record from that particular table using big SQL and you know you can simply write a query you can trigger it onto big data so Gautam, I think there's some audio problems. Uh, okay, you're back. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm back. Hello? Yes, can you go back like a couple, you know, like a couple of minutes because I think you were uh, speaking, but we were not listening. We were not hearing anything. 
Okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, I, I was explaining the you know the need of big SQL, why we need to uh, you know, let's say why we need to trigger a query uh, onto Data Lake and you know what results it, it brings us uh, brings back to us. So uh, you know when when let's say on onto that particular Data Lake uh, view where we are loading that you know all the data from different vendors uh, uh, onto uh, you know platform onto a platform let's say Data Lake. So uh, onto onto a platform let's say Data Lake uh, we can trigger a query and that query would result uh, into a particular result set and that result set could be you know in form of uh, any kind of file format so those file formats could be you know parquet file format and and could be csvs and and that or or it could be normal data that you want to fetch onto a text analytic tool or big in insights or big i mean from big insights to a big sheet uh, kind of component or, or just uh, onto a SQL query compiler. You could use command line interface. You could use, uh, you know, a SQL editor, and you can you, you have different options in order to do that. And when when we talk about compiler, big SQL compiler can send that data to Spark as well. So Spark can integrate to that uh, that uh, particular you know result set and perform and uh, you know put graphs. We can make graphs from that, and you know we can do. Uh, machine learning component uh, on top of it using Spark, and and if I if I guess it right, uh, probably you know someone mentioned about Vora, uh, a SAP's component. It it is basically if you know if if it integrates with Spark, I mean if integrate with Hadoop or Spark. So so that's basically not sure. I'm not very much familiar with the uh, SAP's uh, initiative, but. Uh, uh, you know, this is this is a compiler. It's very different from you know an analytical tool. Whereas Big Insight is is one of the analytical tool. So so combining all the pieces, there are like there is so much of information out there. Like uh, from from big data or open source perspective, there are a hundred different type of tools. Uh, our our main focus and our main goal was uh, you know to to put uh, forward big SQL and its architecture why it's so important and what are the things that it's doing on to you know Hadoop space so so as a takeaway I could summarize all of it as you know big SQL has JDBC ODBC connections it is a compiler and Hadoop it lies on Hadoop Hadoop is a framework of solution a framework that provides a list of solutions for a particular problem statement. It is not confined to a per particular technology. You can basically bring on your own tools in order to analyze the data. Ingestion and extract and transform and load are different aspects of Hadoop. And the query execution could be done by using different components. Those different components come from different shops. Among all those different components, we have described, you know, Pig, Hive, MapReduce, Big SQL. Uh, you know, all these components, Big SQL is the one that stands out. It integrates with a lot of other databases too. It is a value-added services that is provided with Big Insights. We have carried out a lot of, uh, you know, POCs, and we have done a lot of, uh, uh, you know, workbench. Uh, uh, you know, we have uh, done a lot of research with a lot of uh, uh, tools that are available by different companies. Uh, in order to name them, you know, one of them is Hortonworks, another one is Cloudera. So, so these are the, you know, companies uh, we have seen their. Uh, uh, you know components and we have evaluated and compared big SQL with so big SQL stands literally stands out of all those components that are available in market right now and and you know now you know towards the end we understand what its architecture looks like what are the things that uh, big SQL can do for us where does it lies what data it is fetching from and uh, you know where where is that we are triggering a particular query, and uh, you know what are the use cases that we can use Big SQL for, 
Now there there is one more component to Big SQL that that how it does you know the technical part of it. We can take that as another webinar. Or I can I can share that information with audiences if anybody is interested in particular. We can uh, you know walk through the technical aspects too, and uh, you know given that if somebody is interested. Meanwhile, you know I would finish up the the session, and meanwhile I would leave it open for questions. So uh, yeah, uh, I mean that would be the end of the you know things from my side. Um, we have a few questions, um, yeah. Gautam. So, one is, what is the in-memory working functionality of Big SQL? So, so as we understand in-memory, it is a concept where, let's say, you know, I've worked on, you know, while working with Impala, there were there were components when, you know, you have a particular workload, and you are actually writing a query, and you get results like. Uh, faster when you're using in memory whereas when you are using you know you are triggering directly onto Hadoop you basically uh, you know you triggering your query onto Hadoop you basically get in more time so in memory concept is you have all the data that and you define a particular it's basically a RAM so you define a particular RAM memory for for uh, your component, let's say Impala, or or in our case, like let's say Big SQL. So you define for Big SQL, you define a particular uh, you know size, and then you say we are triggering uh, in memory, uh, uh, you know we are triggering a query, and that data li data set lies on in memory. So on on you know that particular data set lies on in memory component of Big SQL. When we talk about in memory for Big SQL. We do not, we do not go for a concept where you have to load, you know, a particular data set in memory. Data set resides on cluster. So, so that is one of the beauty of Big SQL. You don't have that component here. So, all your data is cluster. You don't have to load it anywhere. We are triggering on to cluster. Okay. Um, the next question is. How does Big SQL handle unstructured data such as an image or other similar? So when it comes to unstructured data, there there are different syntaxes. You know, I, it's a very good question because uh, you know there are uh, you know there is a need of uh, triggering unstructured data. That's why that's why uh, you know. PLSQL procedure language or a sequential query language uh, was not sufficient, and that's where Big SQL came into picture because there was a need of triggering to that unstructured data. When we talk about Big SQL, we have certain other defined syntaxes. Those those are you know those we grew from uh, uh, you know SQL. So there are there are some additional syntaxes that uh, Big SQL supports. Uh, those are uh, those are new for PL SQL developers, and uh, when it comes to you know uh, triggering that unstructured data, all that unstructured data is basically lying onto onto Hadoop. We call it unstructured, but but it is semi-structured because because you know clusters they have a topology. They they are connected through a network, so. And the data lies inside that, so it's semi-structured data, and the query is, you know, the compiler could uh, execute the query onto that semi-structured data, you know, and there are some, you know, KPIs through which we could do that. So, so let's say, you know, let's say we are looking for, uh, you know, some JPG files, we can trigger uh, a query with a timestamp, or the uh, you know, or, or or any particular key associated to it, we can even look it up using using the extension. So it it really depends on what kind of semi-structured or unstructured data we are looking for. So yeah, but it is possible using Big SQL. But in in case where you you know somebody wants to uh, figure out uh, a particular use case or you know look at some particular uh, data set which is unstructured I, I could uh, surely 
you know ingest that and and show it how to tr trigger it and the you know we could cover the the technical part in like our next presentation too for big sql okay another question going back to the data and memory consider yeah. we have 10 terabytes in data and okay. our ram size is 100 gigabytes how do we process this so okay so you have 10 terabyte of uh, data and uh, you have uh, a RAM of, uh, let's say, how, how much you said? A hundred gigs. A hundred gigs, yeah. And uh, you have big SQL component lying on it. So what happens is, uh, uh, you what what we did, what we do is, we have all this data lying onto, uh, you know, onto Hadoop, and big SQL uses uh, automatic memory tuning. So this memory tuning is called, you know, it's there is a component called MPP that's like massively parallel processing. So so that's what Big SQL stands for. You know, it's it's a massively parallel processing SQL engine. So it would parallel process through, you know, all the data. So let's say, you know, let's say you have uh, 10 terabyte of data and you have you have 100 gig of RAM. So when you trigger a query there is parallel processing going on through you know through the memory so it basically doesn't uh, you know uh, consider uh, uh, you know it, it uses a low latency latency you know parallel execution so it's it's a it's a infrastructure of performing reads and writes onto database so so let's say you know uh, there are different different nodes that have your data and every data is you know by default replicated three times so uh, what SQL engine does is, you know, it would uh, it would go down to all the nodes and you know starts processing parallel process the execution of the query. So you know that's how it you know going deeper onto onto the in memory concept of it. So it it basically is free from just looking up onto that hundred t hundred gigs of data. So it would it would look through all ten terabyte of data. So and you know how it does is it, it you know how how efficient it is is basically you know it uses a catalog service so that catalog service would have you know definitions and locations so it's very easy to drill down onto like you know where that data would reside so you know and then there are like workload management and and you know performance tuning that that we could do then you know if it comes to like uh, you know that uh, there are different data sources and uh, and then we have you know uh, components that we have to collectively look on and you know it's there is a group uh, that we are triggering query to it there's there's another process to it through which you know we can uh, we can write one single sql statement and can basically you know derive uh, our results from there Okay. Uh, next yeah. question: How does Big SQL compares with Spark SQL? What benefits uh, does it have in terms of performance over Spark SQL? So, over Spark SQL, Spark SQL, you know, it is basically we are using analytics. So there is uh, there is uh, you know it, this engine is for performing analytics, whereas Big SQL is a query compiler. So uh, Spark SQL, we can write write you know your query onto uh, you know Spark, and then it would go talk to Big SQL Query Compiler, and and you know get the results from there. So so there could be another query compiler that you are using uh, in between uh, uh, your Hadoop database and uh, your Spark, because Spark is a service where you can write a query and get the result. But uh, but it is uh, you know with with big SQL you have the you have more functionalities, it's it's widespread. Whereas you know uh, Spark SQL is is constrained. So so imagine big SQL being being father of uh, you know uh, Spark SQL. You, you can say that. You know like I said you know 
you can spill large data sets onto onto local disk and uh, you know at each node uh, big sql would uh, you, you know you can process a query that thing can you cannot do using spark so so you know it's yeah, when when it comes to like you know defining in memory and you know how it is different you can define big sql as like a complete engine that is that itself is an in memory caching engine so like we can use we can use subqueries and uh, and then we can use uh, different expressions udf and different joins using use you know in onto big sql we can and it, it supports uh, various uh, scalar functions support table functions and procedures you know have have analytics function itself in itself whereas spark sql is you know limited to to analytic portion and you know it, it basically draws its result from from big sql Okay, there's a couple more questions, but I think we're going to have to follow those up via email. Uh, yeah. I don't think you can provide a short answer in terms of comparing Big SQL to other uh, SQL technologies. Um, well, I have I have a complete I have a complete report because you know comparison took a lot of time and and we we extracted the results and we basically performed researches on it. So so I could share it with you know audiences if someone is interested in particular. Well, we can send it then with uh, uh, because I, an email will go out with the link to the recording, so we can attach this. Uh, this report that you have so that everybody sure. gets it. Yeah. Okay, perfect, wonderful. Yeah. That's it, we don't have any more questions, so thank you so much everyone for joining us and, and thank you uh, Gautam for your presentation and look yeah. forward to having you attending some other of our webinars. All right, thank you everyone for joining.